So much attention on LeBron James. And yeah. Stephen A., it's sort of a difficult question yeah. to phrase. We all understand the greatness of LeBron James. Of that, there is no doubt. But he's in his 20th year. Yeah. Is it still reasonable for us to expect him to put a team on his back if they need him to and carry them against the one seed in the West? Not if you're asking him to score. If you're asking him to lead, be a playmaker, be somebody that runs the offense, be somebody that directs traffic and opposition, you know, and allocates responsibility to the other players. Yes, he's that basketball savant. He's got the reputation, the respect. They're making goat noises whenever he shows up in the locker room after a win because everybody knows how great he is. But interesting point to point out, which is why I brought up the scoring. Fellas, listen to this. LeBron James averaging 5.7 to 7 points per game through the first three quarters on over 50% shooting this postseason. In the fourth quarter, however, numbers dropped to 4.4 points per game on 33% shooting, one for 17 from three-point range. And his 33% field goal percentage in the fourth quarter is the third worst of anybody this postseason behind R.J. Barrett of the New York Knicks. Mm. And shockingly, Clay Thompson of the Golden State Warriors. So obviously he is struggling, particularly from three-point range, to look for him to score and to be that offensive juggernaut we've known him to be throughout his career. That might be asking it too much, but to ask him to lead on the basketball court in terms of leading his team, that is not too much to ask for this great one. Well, those numbers were stark when we just saw them up there on the screen. Uh, he's also, I'll just remind the audience for anyone who forgets, this is a guy who had a serious foot injury not all that long ago and it's still not clear just how fully healthy he is from that. Again, what are you expecting? What is, the, what is a reasonable expectation from the great LeBron James at this stage? To be the great LeBron James in other ways. I mean, he still can control, and we've seen him control. He controlled the back half of the season, intellectually. His intellect controlled the season. You know, I think none of us really liked the three-point shot he took when they were down three. No, we didn't. We didn't. But you know why it stands out? Because LeBron never, ever, 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 ever makes the wrong play. That was like, okay, that was a play we didn't like. Come on now, 20 years. It's like once every few years he makes a play where you go, oh, I don't know. Most guys do that three or four times a game. LeBron does it once a decade. He can control the game with his intellect. I expect him to do that. Stephen A., you're right about the fourth quarter. Those are facts. But, okay, he doesn't have to maybe exert himself physically in the fourth quarter. There are ways to still control the game without doing it physically. I expect that to happen tonight, which is why I expect the Lakers to win tonight. I think LeBron is going to show his effectiveness tonight scoring the ball because the Lakers found something late in the game. It was a pick and roll with Austin Reeves that led to him getting two threes that he made and one that was further that he missed. So now you get that Jamal Murray matchup that led to LeBron continuing to drive the ball early, which is why he and AD had double-digit free throw attempts. And also for the Lakers, if you get more stops and you're not allowing the Nuggets to score 130 points, right. now you're able to get out in transition and put LeBron in position to not only score the ball in transition, getting layups and dunks, but also getting teammates involved. And, and another thing that's going to make it easier for him to lead and to do what Wilbon and I alluded to is if Anthony Davis shows up. Anthony Davis, when this, mother, when this man is playing, is a superstar in this game. The issue with him is the continuity with which he puts that superstardom on display. Jokic had 36, 21, and 14. It's made us forget Anthony Davis had 40. 40 and, no and 10 rebounds no on turnovers. zero turnovers. And if that Anthony Davis, if you tell me that Anthony Davis is going to show up the rest of this series, I'm going to tell you at the very least we are having a seven-game series and the Lakers might win it. All right, let me leave it there for the moment because we have a few other pieces of business, but it'll be fascinating to see. Again, LeBron James, no player his age has ever been counted on to the degree that he is. He almost had a triple-double in game one, and he found most of his success when getting that mismatch that Jalen was talking about against Jamal Murray four of six from the floor when defended by Murray three for eight against Aaron Gordon Lakers fall in game one despite a great performance from Rui Hachimura his defense speaks for itself but was also terrific on the other end of the floor he's shooting 55 percent on catch and shoot threes in the playoffs that's the second best among all players with at least 25 attempts trailing only Jalen Brown 
And we are delighted as we count to town here to game two to welcome in Rui Hachimura, who has been the center of so much attention after his defensive performance in game one. Rui, thank you so much for taking the time to do this. What are the emotions like as your team gets set for the start of game two? Yeah, we're excited. You know, uh, last game, I think uh, our first half wasn't pretty good. So, you know, I think that this game from for this game, you know, from the beginning, I think it's going to bring a good energy and uh, we're trying to win this game. Very good to see you, man. Great performance in game one, 17 points. And then not only that, the defensive performance you put on defending against Jokic in the fourth quarter. That's the role. Is that the role you should we should all anticipate you playing the rest of this series, considering the job that you did against them in game one in the fourth quarter? Yeah, I think so. You know, um, even the before the, this series, you know, I watched a lot of film with the coaches and about guarding the Jokic. So, you know, I think uh, I'm pretty uh, I'm pretty good, uh, feeling good about it. So yeah, today, you know, we just got to be more physical and uh, bring the energy. Yeah. Rui, you were traded mid-season. What, what were your initial thoughts about being traded to the Los Angeles Lakers from a non-playoff team to a team that was trending toward trying to be a playoff team to how you feeling about your role with the team right now? Man, I, it's crazy, you know, I was just talking to somebody about it, you know, like a couple months ago, I was in a different team and it was in the East Coast and uh, they weren't even going to make a pro, so, you know, <laughs> and now I'm here in the West Coast in the uh, conference final, so, you know, it feels crazy, you know. Uh, I, now I know, like, you know, life can change, you know, quickly, so, you know, um, but, you know, I'm, I'm so happy to be here, you know, playing with these guys, and, uh, yeah, it's just I'm so excited. Yeah, Rui, those of us with ties to Washington, D.C., we're hoping we see you in this role in Washington, but that's for another day we'll get further into that. Tell us about playing Jokic. I mean, a lot of people are now just becoming aware of him in great detail for the first time. How great is he? How difficult is it? What is it like to play against a guy with this many varied skills? You know, like, he, yeah, he's pretty good, you know. He was a MVP candidate, too, you know. And, you know, he's just like, you know, he's so crafty, you know. He can shoot, he can pass the ball, he can, you know, play for the, the his teammates. So we just got to, you know, focus on him tonight, too. And, uh, yeah, we're going we're gonna to see you. Bro, what do you guys, I mean, there's a lot of things that you have to do in order to win this series. But what stands out in your mind that you guys have to do against these, ne these Denver Nuggets in order to advance to the NBA Finals? I think, you know, they're a pretty big, uh, big team. So, you know, we just got to box them out, you know, and uh, we just got to get a rebound. You know, that's going to be the key, you know. Um, and also, we got to get back on the defense. You know, they're pretty fast, too. So, yeah. Rui, big stage. You get a lot chance to play alongside LeBron James and Anthony Davis. What is it like being on the floor with those guys, understanding that not only is your role very important, but not to get in all of those guys and not be ready when your opportunities present themselves? Uh, it's crazy, you know, you just say, you know, I'm, I'm playing with AD, Braun, you know, right now. And, you know, we talk about me and uh, uh, I talk to them about it, you know, how we can impact the games, you know, if, we, if we, all three is going to be on the same floor. So I think tonight we're going to see that a lot. So, yeah, I'm so excited for it, yeah, you know. Rui, I don't want to interpret it for myself. I want you to tell our audience when you first arrived as a Los Angeles Laker, owner Jeannie Buss told me about the situation regarding the number that you wanted to wear. You're wearing number 28, obviously before you wore number 8, which is the number the late, great Kobe Bryant wore. Talk to us about that and you making the decision to have the number on your jersey that you have. Yeah, it was a number, you know, um, of course, it's for Kobe and uh, his daughter, but also it was uh, my, you know, actually, actually, it's my birthday, you know, February 8th, so that's why I picked the number. So there's a, it's, a, it's a deep meaning, the both of them, so yeah. That's terrific. Listen, we know you need to get yourself ready to play this game. Thank you very much for making this Thank time you. for us. Good luck tonight in game two. Thanks yeah, so much for the time. You. Thank you. Thanks Thank a lot. You. Jalen Rose, you said something at our production meeting today that stopped everyone in their tracks. Will you remind us what that was again? Well, if the Lakers don't win today, the they're done. So, Stephen A., you better get you a tan and enjoy Stephen A.'s world for the next week. <laughs> you guys better enjoy your golfing. And, and I get it. The first couple of series, the Lakers took game one. Mm -hmm. They're not going to beat this team four out of five if they lose to a squad that has not lost at home. And, yes, the Lakers did a good job in getting back in the previous game. Let's not ignore that they were down in the previous game. 
while the Nuggets went on to score the most points that they have in this postseason. They have multiple players hit 15 plus that are role players who perform better at home. The Lakers better get it done today or this is going to be a short series. Stephen A, he's saying it's a must win for LeBron tonight. What do you think? I don't know what the hell Jalen Rose is talking about. <laughs> Let me get this out of the way right now. I'm not saying that the Lakers are going to win this series, but I don't think the outcome of game two determines it. I will remind y'all that 17th game one marked the 17th time LeBron James has lost game one of a playoff series since 2011. That means in the previous 16 playoff series, not including this one, of course, because it's not finished yet, he won 11 of those series out of the 16. Losing game one is not a death knell for LeBron James. That's number one. Number two, and more importantly, I saw Kevin Durant and Devin Booker put on a show in games three and four against the Denver Nuggets. Don't tell me LeBron James and Anthony Davis can't do the same. If the games were in L.A. and they lost the first two, that would be different. But you go back home to the Crypto.com arena, LeBron and A.D. and the crew coming back Saturday. We'll be there. Monday, we'll be there. Okay. They coming back. Excuse me. I'm not ruling that out at all. Even okay. if they lose tonight, the Lakers could tie the series. Now I expect it to be 2-2 after four games. Okay. Thank you for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.